Hello everyone and welcome to this special Worldsmiths presentation. In a couple weeks I, Penguin Ball slash Freya Bell slash Elizabeth Hodgson, will be going to a maker fair in Calgary and they have asked me to do a presentation, uh, two actually, one Saturday, one on Sunday, about the publishing industry. So I am doing one on publishing short story anthologies. So I am putting this video up on YouTube so we can get some feedback from our community before I have to present. So while you're watching this, I'd like you to write down any questions you have, anything you'd like elaborated, anything you felt I went by too quickly on, and either leave a comment or ping me in Discord, and I'll improve my presentation as needed. So without further ado, we will jump into it. <coughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to this presentation on publishing short story anthologies. My name is Elizabeth Hodgson, and today I'll be walking you through the publishing process from inception to book in hand. I'll introduce myself first and the World Smith Publishing Company, and then I'll go step by step through the, the process we do and what has worked for us so far in the past. So as I've said, my name is Elizabeth. I am a Canadian writer, crafter, and now publisher. I've always written fiction, but I really started taking it seriously in 2015 when I did my first NaNoWriMo competition. NaNoWriMo is National Novel Writing Month. It takes place in November, and you have the goal to write 50,000 words in a single month. And for me, going back into writing, I found that really inspired me, like it kind of lit the fires again. So I started looking for writing communities and <laughs> here I am now. Uh, anyway, Worldsmiths is where I found my home in 2018. At the time, uh, we were still housed on a forum, but in 2019, we moved solely to Discord. I became a moderator and helped build up the community with weekly discussion questions and taking over the monthly writing challenges. And the community of Worldsmiths is friendly, we're supportive, there's no participation requirements, and that's why I love it so much, because we're more like a writing support group than like a taskmaster group aiming to get you to write a thousand words a day. So 2021 was Worldsmiths' fifth anniversary as a writing community, and we wanted to do something really big to celebrate. The idea to do an anthology was kind of casually tossed out, but then we sat and thought about it and we're like, well, actually we could do this. So we did a ton of research and in February, 2021, we ended up incorporating as a nonprofit. Our charitable goal is to provide a low pressure, friendly publishing experience for both experienced and brand new writers so that they can get their feet wet in a publishing space that is pressure free and where we will help walk them through every step of the process. Planning our first anthology was definitely an adventure and a learning experience, and we are grateful for our community's uh, grace and patience as we did make mistakes along the way and learned from them and improved with our second and now third anthologies. Uh, there are a lot of moving parts when it comes to publishing an anthology, and being able to stay on track and on top of the ball is uh, vital to make sure you're able to do this properly. So in my planning documents for this, I have the anthology broken up into eight phases, which I will go over one by one. Those phases are preparation, the submission period, the reading period, the developmental feedback phase, the line editing phase, the proofreading phase, formatting, and then finally publishing. So first is the preparation phase. This is kind of before the timer starts on your publishing journey and there's lots of things you need to research and to be thinking about before you even really get started. So the first is the timeline. How long do you have to work on this anthology? Knowing when you want to publish will help you work backwards to decide when you need to start. So for example, it takes Worldsmiths about nine or ten months to put out each anthology. That means if I wanted to release an anthology for November 1st, I need to start my preparations in February at the latest. There's also the budget to consider. How are you going to pay for all this? It costs us approximately 2500 Canadian to put out an anthology, but there are parts you can drop to be more economic. We use crowdfunding via Indiegogo to pay for our books right now, but we are hoping that as our catalog expands and we grow as a business, that we won't have to rely on that as much. You also want to consider your work capacity. Will you be going alone or will you have help? Putting together an anthology does take a lot of works, 
a lot of work so you need to even figure out if you have the hours in the day to put into this. I estimate I put about 15 hours a week into Worldsmiths but that does include uh, the moderation and the events and whatnot that we do each week. So for your anthology you also want to consider the theme. What will your, your anthology be about? Themed anthologies and best of anthologies are very popular on the market. For our first anthology, we went with just a general theme of myths, legends, and dreams, and people could submit whatever they like. For our second one, we chose a more focused theme called Darkness and Moonlight. Pardon me. These are stories that take place under the cover of darkness, like heinous murders or illicit love affairs, and much more. And themes are a great way to get both your potential authors and your audience excited about what the book is going to be about. The next thing you want to consider are the submission details. When you're soliciting submissions, you want to be clear on what you're looking for. Are you looking for really long stories, really short ones? Do you have limits on the violence that can be shown? Or are there certain tropes you want to avoid? How much are you paying the authors? How do they submit? What publishing rights are you keeping? This is where you're going to want to spend a lot of your time on research and seeing what other anthologies do and what your goals for this anthology are. And I use Rowland.com and the Published to Death blog to keep track of upcoming submission opportunities, and both are great resources to see what the competition is up to. To give you an example of what should go on a, on a submission page, I'll go through what Worldsmiths is doing for our next anthology. We have submissions open right now, actually, for our third anthology, Seasons and Ceasing, and we are choosing to solicit stories between 2,000 and 8,000 words, with a payment of half a cent a word up to $40. This is US as well, because most of our writers are American, so you can pick whatever pay rate you want. And we ask that they submit through a Google form that we are going to be keeping uh, non-exclusive submission rights and reprint rights, and we also accept reprints and simultaneous submissions. We also ask that their, their stories shy away from gore and sexually explicit material. So once you've decided on all these guidelines, you'll want to post them somewhere easy to access, like your website. Make sure your contact, is information to, uh, your contact information is easy to find because people always have questions. And this is a personal preference, but once Worldsmiths has the theme, we like to order the cover as soon as possible. We find uh, that it is really great to have for advertising because once you have a cover, people know, well, they've put at least a little bit of money into this. It's a thing that's most likely going to happen because I have seen too many anthologies fall through at the planning phases because people do get overwhelmed and don't realize how much work it takes to put one out. Uh, covers do cost money, of course, so you'll have to come up with money somewhere first, especially if you're planning on doing crowdfunding campaign later. Our cover cost uh, between 150 and 200 US, I can't remember exactly what it was, but that is at the low end. You can expect to pay up to $500 depending on the artist's reputation and quality. Uh, there's a ton of Facebook groups as well that have pre-made covers that you can just change the, um, the, the title and the author name for, and those are a more affordable way to go, but you're not able to customize so much. So do consider that if you're trying to keep the cost down as low as possible. Once you've got your submissions page set up, you are ready to start receiving submissions, which takes us to phase two. The submission phase lasts as long as you want it to. Worldsmiths keeps submissions open for a period of three months, but you can make this period as long or as short as you need to. During this phase, you will promote on social media to get the word out, and if you have a newsletter, you'll put your submission in there. If you're lucky, you might get into a submissions roundup blog or a Facebook group that shares posts, and I can share the name of some Facebook groups if you come see me at my table later. Really, this phase is about seeing, uh, is put, about putting out lures and then seeing what you pull back in. And there's not a lot to do except for really waiting and promoting the anthology as best as you can. Phase three is the reading phase. Whether you read stories as they come in or if you do them all at once in a group is up to you. We prefer to do them in chunks so we can kind of compare stories and see which ones measure up well against each other. And for us, we set aside a month to read them. It really depends on how many stories we come, we get. We tend to get 
uh, less than 40 submissions, but I do anticipate that number growing for future ones as our name gets out there. So we might need to expand that reading section in the future. So first we come up with a long list and a short list. Long list is the stories we like but aren't 100% sure on, and the short list is ones that we're pretty sure on but need to uh, compare, make sure there's not stories that are too similar to each other. And then we move on. We tell the selected authors that they have been accepted into the anthology. And we also send them the contract to review that outlines in more detail what rights we're taking and what they can expect from the publishing process. And if you don't have a lawyer handy, there are plenty of blank contracts you can draw up using templates on the internet. It's just a quick Google search of uh, book publishing contract or something to that that effect. So the fourth phase is the developmental editing phase and this is the first of three editing phases. There are a lot of ways you can approach this. A professional editor is expensive and you might expect to start around a thousand dollars for an 8,000 or 80,000 word anthology and it just goes up from there. But getting a professional editor really helps with the quality of the work and helps make it feel cohesive rather than having each story be edited by a separate person, uh, which is something you can do. You can crowdsource your editing. You can go through Fiverr or something like that if you're really trying to keep costs low, but expect to spend some money during the uh, editing phases. Worldsmith is uh, using a combination. We do have a professional editor who has been fantastic. Sophia, we love you. And uh, if you want her contact information, please come see me at the table later. We also have our community on Discord. So we have stories up for comments and people are able to read and give their feedback. So that gives the story in front of more people's eyes than just the editors. And we, the four of us that run the anthology in Discord on Worldsmiths, also read the stories out loud on voice just the four of us and give our feedback kind of as a group so there are many ways you can do this during phase four we also launch our crowdfunding campaign we chose to go to indiegogo and because we can do uh, partial funding as well as all or nothing and last time we were 50 dollars short of our goal so we're really glad <laughs> that we went uh for just partial funding Anyway, I'll be doing a video on crowdfunding for authors at some point later, so do watch out for that on our social media, but the short version of what we do is thus. We aim to raise at least $2,000. That covers author pay, cover art, assorted fees, and the editor. We have made more than that in both of our Indiegogo campaigns, and that has allowed us to do fancy add-ons like book trailers. As for reward tiers, people love being able to get physical copies of the books. That does increase the cost, and as you do have to pay for a full wrap of the cover rather than just the cover itself. But it has been really worthwhile for us to do so so far because we found that most of our pledges have been for physical copies. We also offer limited hardcover copies available through the campaign, which lasts about a month, and we advertise heavily on social media and our newsletter throughout this period. The last thing you want to do during phase four uh, is set up your pre-order pages. This is where you have to decide if you're going to be publishing wide or exclusive. Publishing wide means going through something like Smashwords, which gets your book into places like Barnes and Nobles, libraries, and also allows individual booksellers to place an order to have their book in your store. Going exclusive means going solely through Amazon and Kindle. And there are pros and cons to both and there's no straight cut answer for what is better for you so this is where you need to do your research and see which method of publishing is the best fit for you me. phase five is the line edit which works the same as the developmental edit we are just looking at the story at the sentence level does the sentence flow is dialogue natural are the correct words being used and we have two weeks to provide feedback and the authors have two weeks to make changes for a total of one month. During this phase, we are also starting to gather ARC readers. ARC stands for Advanced Reader Copy. These are the books you provide to reviewers in exchange for an honest review. The aim is to have a large pool, like 50 plus reviewers, uh, who will have their reviews posted before the launch date of your book. The reason you want such a large pool is because as 
many promises as people make, they do not follow through, unfortunately. So you might only get a quarter of those people coming back and leaving reviews on your sites. So you want to make sure that you have as big a pool as possible to get the maximum number of reviews out of them. As reviews do generate buzz, and they also show that the book is worth buying. So you want as many reviews as you can. There are sites like BookFunnel and Story Origin that allow you to manage and send out your books to ARC readers, but you don't have to use them. You can always go manual with a spreadsheet, etc. Phase six is the last of the editing phase, and this is where we do the proofreading. Uh, for us, our editor makes suggestions, and we, the group of four who run the anthology, accept or reject the changes on behalf of the authors. So as this does not require the author's interaction, we have just two weeks bookmarked for this phase, and it does go by very quickly. Phase seven is a six week phase. This covers formatting, ordering print copy proofs, and sending out the art copies. We personally use Vellum for formatting as a Mac only pro program, but if you're on PC, you can use something like Scrivener or Word. They do allow you to export into the appropriate formats. And there are also formatting services you can, you can pay for, uh, a lot of professional editors have them, as do people on Fiverr, if you're looking for a different way to format your book. Once the book is formatted, you are ready to send it to the printers. And there are several options you can find online, but the most common one is Ingram Spark. There are upload fees here, so be aware that it isn't free to use, and the prices are in US dollars. The best practice when ordering proof copies is to order a single copy to make sure that your formatting is as you intended it to look. And you should also be aware with Ingram Spark that the shipping times and processing times change throughout the year. Right now in the spring, it takes approximately five business days to process and then the uh, normal amount of time to ship out. I usually get my books within two weeks if I'm ordering in the off season, but they do have a busy season, which is at the end of the year, uh, kind of October, November, December-ish, where it may take up to 20 days to process, and then you still have to wait for them to ship out. So once you have physical copies of your book, you're ready to send your book to your ARC readers. Some will request physical copies, and others will be fine with ebook. If you choose to offer physical copies, you'll need to plan for the cost of printing and shipping as it is highly uncommon for a reviewer to pay for an ARC. When sending the book, make sure to thank them for their time, of course, and provide links to the spaces you would like the reviews left, like Amazon and Goodreads. This brings us to the final phase, edit, uh, publishing. <laughs> this is the most exciting part, and we find it goes by very quickly. We do it one month after the ARC reader copies go out. This is enough time to make sure they can read and review before the book is released. And this is when you're going to be doing your big marketing push. You want to consider buying ads to promote your book. You can do blog tours, interviews, social media exchanges. The point is to get your, your audience as excited about this book as possible. And it's almost time to release, so you do need to be ready you might want to consider doing a launch party and giving away free copies of the book. Really, the sky's the limit. You can do whatever you like during this phase. Just keep building up that excitement. So basically, there you have it. A quick condensed timeline on how to publish a short story anthology. To summarize, there are eight phases and it takes approximately 10 months to move through them all. Phase one, preparation, takes as long as you need. Phase two, submissions, takes us three months. Phase three, the reading period, takes about a month. Phase four, developmental feedback, and phase five, line edits, both take a month. And phase six, proofreading, takes two weeks. Phase seven, publishing preparation, takes six weeks. And the final, phase eight, takes really as long as you want to get your marketing push done to build up the buzz. But for us, we put in about four or five weeks. We do have some time here still, so I just want to talk a little bit more about budgeting before I have to go. Everything costs money. So here's a quick breakdown of the bare necess necessities needed to publish an anthology. Cover art. Expect to pay at least $200 for a full wrap and more if you're going with a better known artist. Editing. Worldsmith is lucky enough to have a partnership with an editor who is giving us a hefty discount, but you should still expect to pay at least $1,000 for a novel-length anthology. Author pay. 
This depends on how much you're paying your authors. For our last anthology, we played a flat rate of $25 US, but for our next one, we are moving to a model of half a cent a word, which goes up to $400 US. So at our flat rate, we had 20 stories, so that cost us $640 American, or Canadian rather. When we go up to the half a cent a word, it could take us over $1,000 to pay for our authors. And we do want to pay our authors as much as possible, and even the $1,000 to pay them is still considered a token market. To be in a more a semi-professional market, I think you have to be paying like two or three cents a word, so you can spend a lot of money on this phase depending on what you're authoring. There are also a few small fees you should be aware of. There are PayPal fees when you're sending out your author pay, and for us it costs $2.99 a transaction, so that's an extra $60 to be aware of based on 20 stories. And Ingram Spark also has their upload fees, which is $64 Canadian at the current exchange rate. And depending on how you have your finances set up, you might have a business spending account, and that also has associated fees a month. So these little things do add up. You do want to track them, make sure it's all accounted for. But in total, that's a minimum of $2,000 needed to publish a professional-looking anthology. You can break this down by, or bring this down by DIYing a few phases like the cover or the editing. You just really need to be aware of what your skill set is. Be realistically aware because nothing will kill a book faster than a bad cover, and readers will pick up on DIY editing if you don't know what you're doing. So really focus on what you can realistically accomplish while still bringing up the most quality product you can. If you do choose to do a crowdfunding campaign, you may choose to offer swag, like t-shirts or mugs. So you'll need cash set aside to get those printed, and you'll need to price your reward tiers appropriately to include both the cost of production as well as enough to make a profit to make it worthwhile. I personally have been putting this on my own credit card, but if you are operating as a business, you may qualify for a business credit card, which you can then use for costs like this when you don't have money in hand yet. There are a lot of things you can do to add on. We do some small advertising through Facebook, Google, and or Amazon, and that can add up quickly. You can also choose to commission a cover reveal animation or a book trailer. A book trailer is like a movie trailer, typically 45 to 60 seconds long, and it advertises the book. For our last anthology, we paid I think it was 320 American for a professional quality trailer, and this is because people are visual. They want a, just a quick representation of what the book is, they don't want to have to read, and a book trailer showing off what they can expect from your book has been uh, hugely popular in the book world. We are running out of time now, so I can't go into more details, but I'm here all weekend, so I would love to chat with you more. Come see me at my booth. I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have, though we do have some time now for questions, so I'll answer what I can for you. And thank you so much for listening, and best of luck on your publishing journey. Thank you.